Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Peter speaking for today's webinar. Uh, welcome, first, first of all, welcome to today's webinar, and possibly uh, the last webinar for, for 2007. So today's our main topic will center around our newest software that we are actually, as I speak, we are preparing to upload this new version up to the web for everyone to download. So the Easy Builder Pro version 60001. So in our webinar today, uh, I'm gonna review I guess, some of the um, new features. Uh, that, that I guess the, the inter interesting features that I'll go over with, uh, with all of our audience today. Uh, it mainly talks about uh, first, it's the interface, that's the design interface of the EP Pro. We have made a big change to it, and I'm gonna, I want to share with all of you what, uh, what changes we have made and how you might be able to uh, benefit from it. Uh, the second one, uh, the second topic today is about the picture library. So actually over the maybe a few months uh, ago, since then, uh, from maybe version V5.7, we have made uh, a lot of changes. We add contents, uh, change the toolbars re regarding the use of the picture library. And today we'll also review and also preview some of the new stuff that we, we have rolled out in this new version. And that's, lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about our new diagnosis feature that's exclusively made for the CMT series. Okay, so pre previously uh, this wasn't available for CMT series to do an easy diagno diagnos diagnosis. And here we have a new tool available in this new version to do just that. Okay, to start off, so first of all, uh, first is on the new user interface. So let's recall a little bit of what's what's the old interface we have. So in in just we had a version 5.7. So this is the kind of user interface we had. Okay, so it consists of the pretty much the traditional type of the menu uh, text menu with uh, uh, small icons. Okay, so uh, but the icons are mostly looking similar. They're similar in size and the resolution. So oftentimes it's really difficult for, especially for the novice user, for the person who just start using our EV to find the exact function that they want. So these, this is one of the problems that maybe people might have faced. Or secondly, uh, another problem lies in today's everyone's computer or laptop to, laptop are getting higher higher resolution and what this means is that um, the older traditional type of toolbars get smaller and smaller and if you're working on your 22 25 to 30 inch screen for your for design work then these icons become too small and we we often hear complaints about uh, these uh, these icons being non-viewable, and if you change the DPI setting, the icons bigger, but but you get kind of a distorted view of it. If you're using a laptop, we have another at the other another end of spectrum. The problem is the vertical range is too small on a laptop, so uh, some functions are missing when you pull pull it out from the text text menu. And this kind of goes on, people have their problem of using this traditional type of interface. Like um, they have a hard time between whether they want the bigger editing area or they want the convenience of toolbar. Okay, so there is a trade-off of these. Or like I said, the, tool, uh, the icons of the toolbars are equal in size and for of that we're all doing different work. We're doing we're doing different projects, and oftentimes we we have varying 
uh, varying degree of use for each of the icons. So uh, there are other problems, of course, with the old uh, toolbars. So from this to the version 6 we are introducing right now, this is called a ribbon toolbar. This is a kind of toolbar that we'll, you will see in our new version. And it might look, probably look familiar to a lot of people already because this is exactly what uh, the Microsoft has introduced in their Office suite. So the Word, uh, Word Excel, and PowerPoint, uh, they have really used it for, I believe, maybe since 2007 or something. Else. And I think uh, we think that it has generally received pretty good feedback. And not only us, actually, a lot of uh, different design software they already uh, they already incorporate this kind of uh, toolbar design in their software. Uh, but some of them, some of you might still be not be so familiar, or maybe you have used it, but you don't even know why what it's called. So this is called the ribbon toolbar. So it's actually not so complicated. It basically looks like this. Uh, basically, it's a set of toolbars uh, that are placed in several tabs. So if you kind of review this this view, uh, on the top left, you have a quick access. Uh, okay. Let me just use this highlighter here. Uh, you have quick quick assets are here. So these quick assets bar are available all the time. And you have the ribbon tabs, and under each tab are the ribbon groups, and within each group we group similar functions, icons, uh, together, so that uh, so that it, in a general sense, in a bigger picture, uh, it makes it easier for anyone, especially like I said, especially the novice user, to find exactly what they need. In uh, when they start using the software. Okay, so so I'm just I'm let me just clear the screen. So I'm just going to sh open up the software and then show you some of the uh, some of the features concerning this ribbon toolbar. So let me just open the software. Okay, so this part is the same. You can uh, you can open the Easy Builder Pro software from the Utility Manager, and when you just open it, you can immediately see the difference. Okay, so the the entry point is look exactly look very different from before. So we've merged the new project and open project functions together into one page. And if you have used it, you, you definitely can see the difference. We, now we have grouped uh, the, the models into their respective series, and you can choose the landscape or portrait mode right here very, very easily within the same view. And also down at the bottom, okay, you find that uh, when when we're transferring projects between maybe between work workers and engineers, we sometimes compress the project. So uh, people have talked about how it's uh, inconvenient to go between uh, uncompressed utility, uncompressing utility, and then coming back to open the project. And we have heard that. So we have add a button to here, so you can also use uh, open a utility from here directly. And you can you know, uncompress the projects that other people might have sent you. Okay. And also, there's a link to the a lot of demo projects that we are we supply on our our website. So let me just uh, I'll just pick. Uh, also, uh, for this new version, uh, there, the highlight also is that we are supporting uh, some of our newer models starting with this version, and which are uh, CLP3072 and CMT G02, 
and also the CMT HDMI. If you haven't received their respective information, I, I, I believe that you'll receive their data sheet, etc. very soon. Okay. So I'll use the CMT3772 uh, as an example. Okay. All right, so at the entry point, uh, system parameter settings will pop up. So it's similar to before, then you can you add the PLC, and so this is similar to before. Uh, what's different is, uh, of course, the ribbon toolbar on the top. So again, um, there's a file where we put uh, we put some of the file related. So basically, the whole idea of this ribbon design is to better categorize what functions we have and then put the ones that are related to each other together. So like maybe before, uh, the decompile function, the upload function, the uh, compress, uncompress functions, they were all together with uh, these external utilities under the same banner tool. But now we, ha we have uh, better divided them to their respective okay. so you can uh, when you play around with our software later you'll see that more in, more, more clearly and I'll, I'll talk about the, the stuff that they might that might not be so obvious to you maybe so there is a quick access bar right here so these are the stuff like they will be always be there no matter which screen you are at so these naturally are the stuff that um, that you use all the time, right? So you're doing uh, your project, you need to compile, you need to do a simulation and download and retest, of course. So these will always be there, no matter which tab you're in. And then there are the six tabs, six main tabs within the view. So there's home, the project, the object, the data, and view, and tool. Okay. Okay. We'll start with the home. Okay. So the home, we're we're hoping. Actually, we're still ex also kind of experimenting. We hope that uh, the objects or the icon, the the functions that we put this put in this tab, will cover maybe eighty percent of the user time. Time. So of course, example. For example, the system parameter settings now is now here, and it occupies a big space. Okay, so it has a big icon that's right here. So we we do realize that a lot of settings we have put it in the system parameter settings, and we often come back here. If you have used it before, you you probably remember it's it's under the it's at the bottom of a text list in all the previous versions. So now we, we have recognized its importance, its significance. So it's now in the home home page and it occupies a big space. And also the characteristic of the, the ribbon design is that uh, we have dif different sizes of the icons. So the system parameters takes a big big spot, whereas uh, like let me just Okay, so the more of the maybe adjustment features, the arrangement features, they they only they use an icon to represent them. So the the icon size vary according to their significant significance. Okay, so this page basically home is what we hope you can do most of your job here. Oh, also, I want to also mention that. Um, uh, when you resize your your screen, the the toolbar also changes, but it's not to, it's not to make the one on the right to go away. So actually, we automatically or smartly adjust the size of each of the icons. So uh, when you do a resize, for example, like the state language get resized to the one that you're seeing right now, but it's still available. It's, it's not blocked in the 
in the background or anything. You can still do the settings by clicking the menu out. Okay, so it's just to note. Okay, so and for the project, the project uh, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Most most of the project-wise uh, setup and functions are available here. So mainly it is the uh, building function, the simulation and download and compilation, and the libraries. So all the picture libraries, labels, text and macros, sound, etc. All the recipes, the libraries are located in the projects tab. The third tab is the object tab. So uh, you know our functions, we have always built our new features based on objects. And so this is where you'll find all the object, objects here. So if, uh, if you didn't find what, if you didn't find what you want in the quick, uh, in the object group in the home, home tab, like here, if it's kind of difficult for you to find here, then you can just simply hover over to the object tab where every, everything is more clearly it has a bigger icon, and most of them will have a text attached to it to, to describe what object you're adding here. And the next one is the data and history tab. So these are also, also historically grouped into the object in the traditional toolbar, but now they, are, uh, they have a new home. And so these are all the uh, the functions that relates to uh, data collection and data storage. So the data sampling, the event logs, the operation logs, database server, and actually the, actually we just changed that, that the, the IOT, so the MQTT and the OPC UA, ta uh, OPC UA features will also be put in this, uh, in this category. Uh, moving on to the next, next is the view tab where uh, you basically adjust the, uh, your your environment of your development environment right here, like what you're seeing here. Okay, so compared to before, before there was of course there was also a view menu where you can uh, toggle uh, toggle the visibility of some of the options. But you have to kind of go between opening the menu and then back and, and then go to the menu again. But now it's not necessary because uh, you just need to toggle the, uh, the checkbox here. Like for example, like this, uh, this object is showing the, the address. So if I go to the ob object address view setting here, I can just uncheck it. And we see that uh, the object the object address is gone. So likewise, you can uh, easily configure your viewing, your the view to what you're used to. So you can easily turn on and off the libraries and take it away or uh, you can do it very easily and quickly. And last is what we're, we're talking about. It's the tool, is the external tools, that's the converter, easy converter the easy watch or, or uh, the database editor or the CMD viewer. Okay, so I hope I didn't miss anything. So you, if you have any question about uh, maybe the design of the ribbon, you can write it down in the question panel and we can, I, I can come back and review it at the end of the seminar. So now I'm uh, move on to the second topic today. So the second topic is the picture library. Okay. So in this uh, new in, in this new version, we also added a very convenient function with regard to adding pictures into the project, and that's uh, you, by utilizing the the clipboards on your PC. So now you can actually do a copy and paste in our EasyBuilder Pro environment to paste 
uh, or add pictures. And I'm show I'll show you uh, in a very in a few moments. So this is a, a new in version six. So there's an animation for you. Okay. And also, um, uh, the following are actually just available on version 5.7.2. But actually, not too too long ago. But I I just thought this is a good opportunity to actually officially introduce it in uh, um, in our web. So we also had this picture library, uh, I guess a browsing utility, where you can uh, quickly browse through all libraries of their pictures very quickly uh, in, uh, in Easy Builder Pro. And you can add them to the project very quickly. So, so not just the utility. Actually, uh, we 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 put in a lot of effort to actually expand the content of uh, of our library, and and there was there, there was two parts of library that we we added. So the first was uh, system picture system library. So these these system libraries. Uh, are mostly the icons like the switches and checkboxes, the lamps, which allows you to customize their color. And they are based on uh, vector graphics, so SVG. So these, the characteristic of these SVG is that uh, you can change the size like this. You can change the size of resize it to any size that you want. And you won't lose, you won't lose its resolution. So unlike the raster image, like the bitmap or JPEG or PNG, when you enlarge it, you get a jagged edges. So like the circle in the middle, you see, it's not, it's jagged at the edge. So it's no good. So the SVG works a lot in this page in this kind of situation, especially when well, now we are uh, we go into a larger screen, and you want to adapt from smaller screen to larger screen. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to find or redesign your new graphics because these graphics are good uh, even after you have resized it. Okay, so other than sister picture, we also added. Uh, a lot of other uh, generic, generic or industry-related uh, pictures in our libraries, and let me just show you very, very quickly. So now it's live. Let's walk through the library. Okay. So I use the same project that we just started, and uh, like I said, I can call the libraries from the view so I can click on the picture here and that brings my picture library back okay so these toolbars are quite useful we have a lot of interesting features that's associated with these toolbars. Let me just show show uh, show off you some of those. Let me just add some objects here. Okay. So do you know that these for with these toolbars, you can easily change the picture they use for an object just with a click and just find something that's more appropriate. Okay, I want to change it to this one, this guy. I just click the check mark and I change it. So this is a uh, different from before. And you can actually do it for multiple objects. So you have more than one, it's not a problem. You can select many of them 
and say I want to find uh, this one and I can within a click change all of their picture to the, the same one okay. and even when when you're doing the design and you have found you add you you want to you want a picture that we used before but but you couldn't find it in your library or something then you don't have to worry too because we have a feature that's called jump to selected picture libraries or with control plus G so when you press this uh, when you use this function the picture library will jump right away to the picture that it uses then you can you can you can maybe you know, apply it to another one or so on okay or there we also have a quick quick preview feature with these libraries and so let me just show how you can do this so I'm just pick another one Okay, let me just say I want to use this one. So I want I want to adjust these two, but you know instead of actually changing them each time one by one, I can actually do quick review, and that's by pressing down Control and Shift. So when whenever I hover my mouse over the the picture, it changes. So like this, I hover without clicking on it. It changes to the picture that I hovered on. Okay. Let's make this more clear, like this. Okay. And also, uh, you can also drag and drop uh, the items from the picture library and it will create a picture object directly from it. So we just do this. I drag and drop here. There you go. You get the new picture object. Oh, and, and about the, the copy and paste I mentioned earlier, let me just demonstrate that very quickly. So I guess I'll have to find a picture here. Find a picture in my oh, I find it in my PowerPoint. Okay, so they say, okay, this picture is great. I want this picture library here. I do. I just press uh, Control and C to copy it, and now back to the e EB Pro. I can paste it. And then the dialog will show up uh, for the picture object, asking some you know, some information about the the picture, whether you want to keep the ratio, or you want transparent background, etc. And click OK. And here you there you go. You get your picture that's copied just now from the PowerPoint. And in using these uh, in these uh, libraries, I promise I want to show you the some of the new uh, new pictures that we have designed. The original we have designed originally for various industries, and they're actually quite interesting. So let me just I'll use the the browsing tool to open it, so you can browse through. So from I guess from this from from this point from here from alarm all the way to the end are all of the new pictures that we have added in I, I can say within the last uh, last five months or five or six months so there are many 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 I think hundreds of thousands of them that you can use for your application. So I just want to show 
uh, actually the interesting an interesting thing that you can do is that uh, you can combine the like the tank and just open up the Okay. Okay. It is here. Okay. Anyway, uh, you. So, oh, I need to show you how to use this. Uh, utility uh, in this in this uh, browse libraries feature what you can do is that uh, when you find the image that you want and it tells you which library it belongs to like uh, this mixer here okay, I want to use this mixer so it tells me it's uh, in this mixers dot flbx library and I can just click add to the library here and now it's already available in the list of the libraries for this project. So it will be much easier for you to access it uh, very quickly. Um, we, have, we have prepared a video for the new libraries that show what possibilities that you can do with our libraries. So let me just play the video for you. So. Well, you can see how this project are using uh, basically all the new uh, new libraries that we we have added. So you can see like the pipes. We all those pipes we provided the elements of the pipes so in different colors, and we actually carefully calculate the angles of those pipes. So although we we provide only each component, actually you can join them very easily together just by just doing like this is like drawing on your on your paint so I just want to emphasize again that all these uh, these icons and these pictures are designed uh, originally designed by our design team. So actually this are all original work uh, by Wayne Tech. So you can you can use them when you use our EB Pro without any problem. So there sh shouldn't be any copyright issue when you, you know when you push your HMI out to your customer because these are all the original properties by Wayne Tech people. So see, you can make a very beautiful project with with our new EV Pro and with all the support of the new libraries that we provide. Okay, last. Uh, lastly, I'll talk about, and this, actually this part will be shorter, I'll talk about uh, the Dinosaur feature that's exclusively available for the CMT series. So actually, just to recall, maybe take out some memory from you. Uh, if you're, if you have used uh, like non-CMT series like the IEXE or MTB series, uh, if you have done any sort of troubleshooting, uh, you probably know that we have the 
utilities in called this thing is right here. Uh, we can have a number of utilities like the, oh, the easy diagnoser or easy watch. So these you can use this these features to to kind of tap into the working HMI or even the simulation environment to see what the data is in there and then to get to change the design according, accordingly. Uh, unfortunately, because the CMT was a big leap ahead and these old tools no longer work there. So now we have made a new diagnostic tool that is specifically for the CMT series. So uh, this is just showing a diagnosis cycle. So before we had this, um, we understand there were uh, customers' feedback about uh, how it's troublesome to do a, do a troubleshooting. Oh, it's a pun. It's very hard to do diagnostic uh, diagnosis because they have to manually add diagnostic objects and then do diagnosis, and then afterwards they have to take away. And then when there's another problem or unforeseen results, they have to repeat all these unnecessary steps again. And now we have introduced this diagnoser for the CMT. It means that uh, this 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 step uh, be before on the right on the left is no longer needed. And I'll just directly go go to the diagnoser and show you how it's worked. Okay. So for just for showing, I'll use instead uh, a demo project from uh, from AB Pro. Okay. So these demo projects they were they were shipped with our AB Pro software in a project folder. Okay, so this is a okay a demonstration program for this CMT series. Okay, so so suppose that uh, this is a pro this is your project and you have done you know a lot of work doing the design, and now it's time to check whether it's working properly, and you find okay the simulation tool, and then use the simulation tool to check your result. Compiles and then start simulation. Okay, so this is your uh, entry point, and you can close go through. And you found out that oh, you want to diagnose for a page that's not immediately available. So you want to look at your cheese factory, cheese factory part. Okay. So this is the part that you want to look at, but it's not directly available on, on your project. So what can you do? So before, you, have, you will have to add you know, maybe like PLC control and then do control the page from you know, using another, you know, another object, changing the number, or you have to add a function key to change, uh, change the page. But now with the diagnoser, it's, it's no longer needed like that. Okay, so when you open the diagnoser, you right click in your CMT viewer and you can click on diagnoser. So the diagnoser comes out and you'll see the diagnoser has two main parts. The first part is the object page. The second part is the macro page. And we'll go through the object page first. So basically, it will contain all the objects that is currently being used by, yes, by this simulation. Okay, so this simulation where at, at this, I think, uh, window 110. Okay, so of course, it will include maybe some uh, direct window, pop-up windows, or the common windows within the view, of course. 
So, uh, as, as I said before, I want to look at uh, some other page. I can uh, uh, do it from by changing page from this list. Okay, so I can uh, down here. So my project changed that page, and I can see what that page is doing. And also, I'm monitoring all the items that's within the page. And when you actually click on the uh, these address your CMT viewer actually, the corresponding object actually highlighted. So the meter display, this one, is being highlighted on the simulation screen. Okay. And you can only, uh, you can not only view it, you can actually adjust the values, like uh, change this to, 200. The, uh, uh, the number on the screen on the simulation is simulation to or well, the corresponding value for 200. Okay. So this is a uh, by the range that you can with our dinosaur. Okay. So we can look back to to this thing. So, and also, like I uh, said, it's also, you can also try to run macros, test for your macros using this uh, diagnosis utility. So, for, for my, I want to show you this example. I have written a short macro that will reset uh, the quantities and, and remaining meters and all the bottoms down here to their default state. So uh, with macro, and you can do this in the diagnoser, you can easily run diagnostic activities using macro. Okay, so uh, just to reiterate, this function uh, is currently available for, uh, for the simulation. So when you are doing CMT projects and when you do sim uh, when you carry out simulation, you can use the diagnoser to check the values and run macros to do all the diagnosis feature. All right, so. Let me just come back. So I've covered most of what I've prepared here. Uh, again, so you don't have to for this works for uh, most of the CMT series. Of course, not the G01 because they don't have a screen. So the CMT uh, 3072, 3090, 3151, uh, and in the future HDMI, uh, it works on all of the CMT series. And you don't need to add unnecessary diagnostic objects to your projects anymore, which will save you a lot of time when you do your design work. Okay, so that's all for my agenda today. And thanks for joining us.